Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Noah Washington, and you are here with Blurred Binder. Today, we have actor and producer, Mr. Demetrius Gross. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Thanks for having me, Noah. How are you? Good, good, good. Not a problem. Let's just get into the meat and potatoes, as my grandmother said. Let's do it. So, congratulations. You just made your character debut on NCIS Los Angeles. Right on. That's dope. Tell us a little bit of your character, and then afterwards, tell me how you feel about being such um, an in-depth part of the NCIS lore. Well, it's exciting to be a part of this uh, family. I just began my character arc on Sunday's episode, If the Fates Allow. Um, I play Raymond Lewis, who is the foster brother of uh, Callan, uh, played by um, the wonderful Chris O'Donnell. Um, it's it's great. It's a show that's a well oiled machine. It's a um, very exciting show for its fans. Um, our fans have been, you know, through the thick and thin of twelve seasons on the air. So it's it's great. I have a good. I had a good time shooting. Um, having a great time shooting, and it looks like um, we'll be seeing more of the character and his uh, sort of influence in Callan's main story. Um, I'm a fan of the show. I'm a fan of L Cool J and um, Linda Hunt, who's, uh, one of the, um, you know, great sort of icons of our, of our craft and our industry. So yeah, it's an exciting thing to be a part of. Ooh. So, you know, is there something you can reveal about to us about the future? A follow-up question. Well, I, the only thing I will say is that, yes, that we will learn more about, um, Callan's background, um, and his backstory in, through the lens of uh, through Raymond, and to find out how uh, we how we get to Callan being the NCIS agent that he is, um, based off of his background, and uh, so some of the some of the things that they they did in the episode that aired on Sunday were the flashbacks um, to his childhood that sort of give you a little bit more of the uh, tapestry of how he came to be who he is. Oh, great. We have a few fans. What up, David Youngblood? Mm -hmm. You a shout out right there. Okay. Um, so let's let's uh, move on up. So another hit series that you were recently on, Lovecraft Country. Mm -hmm. you, so my question is, were you, you know, keeping up with it? How did you like it as a series? As a whole? It's it's something that we haven't seen before, right? In in a world that where there's so much uh, so much content, uh, to have, uh, a show like this on the air that is, um, is Afrofuturism and magic and, uh, time travel, all of these elements wrapped up in one show, uh, you know, uh, civil rights issues, um, race relations, all these things are tapped on in a very sophisticated and, and, uh, intelligent way by Misha Green, the writer and, and uh, Jordan Peele, uh, who executive produced alongside um, J.J. Abrams, it's just it's a it's really a masterpiece of a show. I, I felt really really fortunate to to help kick it off. Um, I think all our fingers are crossed for a season two. Fans have been very receptive of it. Um, I I kept up with the the show throughout the year throughout the season, uh, even after my episode, because uh, I was just so I was I became such a fan of of the work, and so. Uh, I'm excited to see what happens with it. I think it can go in a lot of different directions uh, if we, in fact, get a, a season two pickup. Mm, you have any insider information? The only insider information I have is that we are, um, we don't, I wouldn't, the people, the characters rather in the first mm -hmm. season that you may think we're done with, don't count them out so soon because uh, like I said, we're in a world of magic, time travel, uh, time displacement. So uh, it can really go in either direction, which I think the the studio will um, will consider as as they as they decide whether or not we're we're going to get to go for a, a second season. Um, we still have a full deck of cards. Ooh, ah man! So you think uh, just off the cuff question right here? No. Okay. Um, now that without spoilers, right now that certain things have transpired in the show, I know, you know what I'm talking about. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, you think, uh, we might see more of your character. Uh, 
It, it makes sense that we would. Um, I think that um, Marvin Baptiste is one of those sort of tangential characters that could at any point in time come right into the, the thoroughfare of, of the plot line because he is the brother of, of, of Letty and of Ruby. So um, it would make sense that, that we would revisit the character um, and I'll leave it at that. Man, I'm always excited to see more journalists on screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he is. He, he's, he is a journalist. Like, absolutely. Yeah, he's a, um, he's a writer for the um, the Springfield, I think that is the name of the newspaper. It's a Springfield courier. Um, and uh, I love I loved playing um, Marvin. I think uh, it's uh, a, a type of character I haven't seen in that period. Uh, you know, a writer and a journalist and a and a and a and a, a research addict. You know, like a uh, a a person who just loves to gather information, and uh, that's what what he's established as. And in, in, in when we first meet him in uh, episode one, so it'll be see it would be great to see if if uh, we're able to go further with that and how that can affect the main plot. So. Um, just moving down the road here. So recently it's come to light that um, Hero Season 1 alumni Leonard Roberts unfortunately had um, an experience on set that left him belittled um, and un frankly unemployed. Uh, what was your experience on Heroes? Can you speak to that? Yeah, unfortunately I don't know Leonard and I actually came into Heroes, I believe it was the second season mm -hmm. uh, when they did villains right was that second mm -hmm. season okay no, that was like season uh four uh, four right it was a long time after that but so i didn't i didn't know about that situation but i actually had a, a really delightful time it, it was one of the one of my first like big guest lead roles where i got to speak in a different language and uh they provided me with a coach and i was able to um to, <laughs> i was able to kind of flex some french chops um First time I really got a chance to do um, stunts and 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 do the do the sort of in, the intricate parts of uh, special effects um, that we don't see. So that was interesting for me. Um, and the cast was great. Uh, Jimmy Jean Louis and Adrian Pazdar um, both have gone on to do amazing things. Um, Milo Ventic Ventic Miglia, who I, I sometimes have a wow. Heard of. I that was a beautiful pronunciation. That's his name, right? Milo, yeah, he's on This Is Us now. Um, so everybody kind of did, and I mean, there's so many other characters and actors. Um, Zach Quinto, they all went on to do phenomenal things. So it was a good experience for me. I'm really sad that that uh, Leonard, um, and I'm not familiar with that story, but um, you know, I don't, I never like to hear something like, you know, that people are having a, a hard time or or something and pan out well for them, um, but. I, I didn't have any awareness of that, so I can't really speak on it. Hmm. Well, I'm, I'm I'm glad to hear you didn't experience that. No, nah, I had a really good time on it. In fact, um, the funny, funny, real quick, funny story when I went in for that audition, I remember I, I wore a like a I wore a pirate eye patch over my hmm. eye. I think I had just I had just saw um, uh, Forrest Whitaker's portrayal of Edie I mean. and. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was kind of channeling my inner uh, Idi Amin for for the character of uh, of Baron Samdi. And so the director later on uh, told me he was like, you know, we almost weren't going to hire you because you wore that eye patch. We thought you were nuts, but we just did such a great job in the in the role that we had to go. We ever, it was unanimous. But and I, I kind of tell that story because you know, for actors um, who are, are burgeoning in their careers and 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 trying stuff i think it's important to to hear that those those kinds of success stories that was a big deal for me at that time because it was more of a theatrical choice you know to to wear eye patch in an audition right because clearly mm -hmm. i have eyes but i think it it speaks to people listening to their um their instincts when they're creating the art and uh how sometimes they can work out wow that's a great segue to my next question so at this point in your career, what is your favorite medium for storytelling? As in, you prefer film, television, um, and or stage? Well, I really miss stage. I just we none of us know when the theater is going to come back. I mean, we were kind of 
we were kind of joking around a couple of my friends and I, we were talking about uh, maybe the open air theater may come back at some point, like theater in the, in the round outdoors. But my favorite is really is, is, is film because you can, you can employ all of the different mediums uh, or all the, t- the tactics to convey a character in mm-hmm. film. Uh, I love television because uh, you get to uh, develop a character over and a storyline over a longer period of time. Um, so if I had to choose one, I'd probably say TV because now TV has evolved to sort of encompass it all in so many ways. Like, you know, you, you get cinematic quality in television like never before. And so, uh, you get that also that opening night feel with television that you would get in theater, right? Because people uh, are tuning in every week when you have a serial show that's coming out and only one episode is dropping a week, you still get that feeling of like the audience expecting and being excited and waiting for that show to air. Um, so TV has become kind of like the um, the the front runner, I think, for me personally, in terms of as a performer, and even as a as a content creator and as a writer, it just it is it's encompassed so much of what we do, especially within the last five or ten years, where we have some of our, our greatest our greatest productions are are streaming. Hmm. I also, not to um, interrupt your thought, I'd also take a minute to say, hey guys, we take questions here, um, so please feel free to submit your questions. Ridiculous uh, or not? Wait, we, do we take ridiculous questions? Mm. Nah, we won't. Nah, submit any question. We're fr- fr- we're family friendly here. Make them family friendly. So cool. So um, just kind of moving down. What's the what's next? What what what's the next thing you're gonna conquer? Uh, well, the next thing I'm gonna conquer. Uh, <laughs> that's such a good word. Uh, <laughs> I'm writing, developing a, a project right now, uh, and op- also developing a couple of uh, concepts. So they could be considered short films, but they're also concepts uh, that could be uh, graduated into larger projects, i.e. Um, pilots for television. Um, but on air, um, right now we're working on a uh, show that's going to be on Apple, uh, Apple Plus. Um, uh, produced by Reggie Blythe, uh, Bythewood and, um, and Brian Grazier, who else is producing Ke- uh, Kevin Durant. It's called mm-hmm. Swagger. And it's about the, um, the yeah. AAU youth basketball, um, macrocosm and like the high stakes world of, of, you know, pre-professional, you know, league basketball, which, and it takes place in in an area that I grew up in. So it's it's near and dear to my heart. I was really excited to, to be asked to come aboard for that. Um, we're almost finished shooting season one um, and uh, we're gearing up to shoot the last episode of that and that should be coming out here pretty soon. That's amazing. Uh, they also filmed in my hometown, shout out Richmond, Virginia. That's exactly um, right, yeah. Um, and my, one of my oldest friends, my God brother is actually on it. He's playing young. Oh. Yeah. Uh, his name's Isaiah. Isaiah. Is he playing, he's playing Jace or is he playing Roy? Who does he play? Man, he's playing the younger version of the main character. Oh, Isaiah. I think I actually did a scene with him. Wow. No, I did because I play, I play, uh, I play Grant Carson. Who's his dad? Small world. This is a small world. Wow. Uh, wow. That's shout amazing. out to you. Yeah, Isaiah. I have a photo with Isaiah. We uh we shot in Richmond uh last year actually. Yeah. yeah. So, wow. Yeah. Small guys, this is yeah. this is what we do here at Black Press USA. We make <laughs> connections. You gel, you gel, you gel, you gel, you gel, you bring it together, synchronize. Wow. Mm. Tell us more about that. Can you tell us more about Yeah, that? I mean it's just for me, it's it's really like a dream come true to be a part of the show. I mean, I I love anybody who knows me knows I love the game of basketball. I'm a I'm a, a basketballophile, if that's even a, a word. But like I, I just you know it's something that is uh, like I said near and dear. And I I'm a huge Kevin Durant fan. I'm a 
huge Reggie Bythewood fan. So to be able to work with these guys on a project um, that is is this timely and uh, talks about family and the dynamics between uh, fathers and sons, mothers and sons, and this high stakes competitive world of, uh, you know, amateur, the amateur athletic union basketball is, it's exciting. I think, I think audiences are in for something that they've never seen before. Um, and it's going to be, it's, it's going to be lit. I'm just, it's going to be dope. Like I, I, that's all I can say. It's just, it's going to be, it's going to be a fire series. Um, and I'm just glad that we, that we're able to retool it, get it back on and, and get it slated for 2021. So it's going to be yeah. exciting for people to see. I'm excited for it. You know, now I know two people on the cast. So right on. I expect to be at the red carpet premiere. Just small, small thing. Yeah, I'm sure that's not going to be hard for you to work out or for us to work out. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you know people's. As they say. <laughs> that is so, that is so um, just fantastic. Um, so what are you watching right now? What streaming shows are you getting into? Mm, I was into Fargo for a minute. I just um, watched Fargo too. I that liked was- I liked that. Um Chris Rock and Glenn Turman mm-hmm. and uh and Jason Schwartzman. Um they were fun to watch on that. Um what else am I really watching? Um man, I got my head like buried in scripts right now. So I haven't been mm-hmm. watching a lot, to be honest. I've been uh taping for stuff and getting ready for my next uh my next move so i haven't really been watching a ton of television i got into uh queen's gambit uh, my lady was watching that so we, i got into that a little bit and uh what else and uh, like i said i was watching lovecraft kind of along with everyone else mm-hmm. um yeah that's those are all like off the top of my head those are the only three that come to mind really mm-hmm. uh, are there any streaming projects right now that you'd like to be a part of? Oh, um, you know what? I'll probably have to email you that answer. I wish I could. <laughs> <laughs> I know that they're about to do a Green Lantern, though. They're about to do one on Yeah, HBO. we talked about it um, last time we were here. Yeah, yeah, I think we chatted about it. Yeah, so, I mean, that one is something that I've been kind of researching and getting, getting more um, acclimated with. In case, mm. in case something in that world uh, comes my way, uh, that's exciting. Um, I think, I think the boys is cool. I work with Anthony Starr on uh, Banshee. Shout out Anthony. Ago. Right, but he, he's he, they're crushing this. Uh, the boys. I have checked out an episode of that. Uh, I've been watching Euphoria. Great mm. work with Zendaya and. Um, and uh, Coleman Domingo on that. Just watched a beautiful episode they shot the other day uh, in the cafe. It was just like this, it's almost theatrical yeah, that episode. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of great stuff out there. Wow, that's right. You did fear The Walking Dead. Yeah. Wow. There's a chance. I mean, you know, Rumorville says that that, that um, you know, I might come back into that world somehow, some way. Um, so we'll see. Part of it, you, you yeah. after your episode, the online uh, blogs blew up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bounty hunters. No, and, well, that's a, a world unlike any other in, in television. Like, I, the producers were telling me, they were warning me before, before it aired. They were like, just watch out. If this is a success, like, if this goes well and the fans like you, you're going to know it. And definitely, um, I was really grateful to see the the outcry of support and appreciation for uh, Emil LaRue and what we were able to do on the show. It was, it's, it's, I'm still hearing, you know, good news about, about what we did on Fear of the Walking Dead. So it'll be interesting to see if there's a, a way to get back in there. Oh, there's, the Walking Dead has so many spinoffs. There's, right. eventually they'll do one. Well, I'm sure they'll give you a call. <laughs> we'll see. I'm very positive. But yes, man, just thank you so much for joining us here today. It was it's super great to talk to you. Are there any last words um you want to give us? Oh, just wanted to say thanks. Thanks for having me and uh, you know, keep your your eyes peeled. You never know where we may pop up. Uh and uh thank you Noah for doing this amazing amazing thing uh with the with the 
the the blurred blurred uh, you know uh, network that you have. It's a it's a great thing. I love uh, it. Thank you. You heard it here, folks. A shout out. Thank Good. You. So thank you so much, Mr. Gross, for joining us. Um, you have a great day, and thank you. Cool. Take care, brother. God you bless. too, man. Peace.